Hello, 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 Instagram, and also YouTube when I upload this to YouTube. Tanika Maria here, all about helping you get real, be healed, and move forward in emotional wholeness, peace, and clarity. I help high-achieving women of faith get real, be healed, and just navigate through life transitions, breakups, and things of that nature with a greater sense of wholeness, emotional resiliency, emotional mastery. I don't claim to have it all together. I am right here in the journey with you. Blessings to you for being here. And as you're joining, I invite you to share, um, just intend for this to be a blessing to you. And in today's video, I'm going to share three profound, simple, yet profound habits of a healed and healthy woman. Three simple but profound habits of the healed woman. And see, these are the habits that I've observed over time that help maintain and sustain your healing. That we want to get to the place of not just simply being healed, but we want to be healthy and stay healthy emotionally. And so we're talking about habits that maintain and sustain your overall peace, staying grounded, feeling safe and secure and supported on the inside. Come on. We're talking about feeling safe, rooted, grounded, and supported within. And not always, and when I say within, I'm talking about between you and God, between me, myself, and I, right? And have, being able to cultivate that and sustain that when you have, have to pivot, when there are challenges in life, when surprises and things happen and things jump, jump off, you, you got some habits that kind of keep you grounded. So on today's talk, we're going to be talking about the habits of a healthy woman. And if you're a mover, a shaker, an influencer, a creator, you're making things happen, you're doing things if you don't have solid habits to keep you emotionally sane and healthy, life can get very frustrating. Life can be very painful. You will lapse back into your old patterns, uh, get triggered up, make poor decisions, all kinds of things. If you don't maintain and sustain healthy habits of healing. And not only that, this catch me, hear me well on this. If you, you get healed, but if you don't do what it takes to maintain that healing, you're slowly drift back into becoming toxic. And so we will repel, push away healthy relationships and attract toxic relationships to us if we don't maintain and sustain our healing. And so we're the ones that will become more and more toxic over time if we don't have sustainable habits of healthy women. And guess what? We're gonna attract who we are, not what we want. So let's dive in. The number one consistent habit that I see of a healthy and healed woman of God, excuse me, I feel hair or something on my face, you guys. But at any rate, number one, soul care. Soul care. This is a foundational habit of a healthy woman. She has a ritual. She has a practice to maintain her soul, her mind, her will, and her emotions. This is daily set aside time with you and God. And I, everything I do is from a faith-based Christian perspective. And to me, this looks like your daily quiet time with God. This is your prayer, your worship, your praise, your spending time in God's presence. This is very critical and crucial. This is the habit of a healthy and healed woman. And this is where you receive downloads. This is where you receive revelations and insight and understanding. And see, that has been the birthplace of my books. Everything that I put out here is coming from the quiet place. And the reality is, as a healthy woman, this it, it stabilizes you. And this is for men and women, honestly. It's not just for women. But when you establish a solid soul care practice, it stabilizes the soul, it refreshes the soul, and it keeps your mind renewed. It is the birthplace, I believe, of your creativity and your flow. Once you've healed and you've maintained that soul care, your, your, your creativity is going to flow from that. Number two, the second habit of a, healed, a, a healthy woman, the habit of a healed woman is self-awareness. Number two, self-awareness. A healed woman has the habit of being aware of what's going on inside of her. She's aware of what she's thinking. And even more importantly, and, I, and the older I get, the more I realize how important this is, but really being aware of what you're feeling and sensing in your body. What do I mean by that? What are you talking about 
Tanika. We get so numb and we get so disconnected that we override that anxious feeling in the pit of your stomach. We override, okay, why I'm thinking I'm doing fine and all of a sudden I'm sad and depressed. What was the train of thoughts that got me here? And now I'm feeling sad. I'm feeling it in my body. I'm feeling anxious. Now all of a sudden, whatever, I, I'm, I was doing fine this morning, but now I'm angry. What got me there? A habit of a healed woman is like, I know where, what I was thinking before I started slipping down into that pit, right? A healed woman, because see, we'll, we'll get feelings, we'll get promptings, we'll have sensations in our bodies, our bodies and our feelings will shift. And a healed woman is going to notice those shifts, those subtle nuances going on with, with inside of her. And when we get so numb and so disconnected, we get into the habit of overriding it. And we keep just pushing past it, pushing past it. The habit of a healed woman is going to take note of that. So self-awareness is being aware of what you're thinking, your train of thoughts when you find yourself, hey there, you find yourself suddenly sad and depressed. You're going to want to know. So, so here's an example. Here's an example of self-awareness. When you're with someone and you're in a conversation or you're around them, and then when you leave it, now you're drained. You feel so drained after being with that person, right? Think about it in terms of a romantic relationship. You're with someone and now for whatever reason, you got this low level anxiety and you feel a bit drained. The habit of a healed woman would take note of that. An unhealed woman or an unaware woman or a woman that's disconnected from her soul, if she's thirsty for dates and dinners and attention, she will override that feeling. Come on. Yeah, I was drained, but let, let me give them a little, little chance. Or you may be sexually attracted to them, but, but you got this low-grade anxiety, this feeling in the pit of your stomach. And after you've been with them for a while, you're feeling a little drained. You feel, your, your spirit is a little off. The habit of a healed woman. We're talking about habit number two. Number one was soul care, that daily quiet and soul care time. Habit number two is I'm aware. I'm aware when I'm so around someone and I'm feeling drained and jacked up. I'm aware when I have a pit in the feeling at the bottom of my stomach when I'm with someone. I'm aware of the thoughts that's leading me to be sad and depressed and I'm the only one sitting here in my house and now I'm depressed. How did I get here? This is the habit of a healed woman. And so... As a healed woman, you don't push past these feelings. You don't push past these red flags. You know what's going on in your body. And I'm speaking from experience, from going through my own situations where I was engaged, right? Just speaking straightly and transparently, I never could get rid of. I mean, it would ease and subside sometimes, but I never could get rid of that low-grade anxiety that I had with my fiancé. He looked good on Christian paper, looked very good on Christian paper. We were in church together. We went to life group together. We was in church every Sunday. We prayed. And at the end of the day, I could not shake that feeling. But I realized that I cared more about how we looked. Mm -hmm. I cared about how everything else seemed to be so right. But I couldn't shake that feeling until God snatched me. Until he snatched me with a prophetic dream. And in that dream, he it, it, it specifically said, break the engagement. I did not know what to do. And that made me even more anxious. But you know how God does? He will snatch you. And that thing unraveled within 10 days from the time of my dream. So trust and believe. Trust when God is showing you something. Trust that gut feeling in the pit of your stomach when something's not right. We're talking about the habit of a healed woman. Heal woman number habit number two, self-awareness. You're aware of what's going on. You are aware. We call it gut, gut feeling. We call it intuition. I call it the Holy Spirit. I call it all of it, right? And the third habit, and I won't be here before you long. Blessings to you all for joining. As you are coming in, definitely share this. I truly appreciate it. Hey, Namara. I see, yes, I see Ariel. Blessings to you all. The third habit of a healed woman, self-giving and community. It's one thing to get healed. It's another thing to be healthy. 
It's an, one thing to be healed, and it's, it's another thing to have sustainable, maintainable habits of health that keep you straight emotionally and spiritually, right? The third habit that I see consistently in women that are healed or that are on their way in that journey, they're not doing life in isolation. They're not living life in isolation without friends or community. Not only that, a healed woman is a woman of purpose, meaning she's actively serving in some capacity in her God-ordained gifts and talents in whatever arena that is, business, church, ministry, creativity, writing, producing, whatever she's doing, she's moving in something. She may not have a full-blown, like, big thing, but she's moving in that direction. And see, let me tell you, the creative aspect of flowing in your purpose, it brings another level of joy into your life. And see, when you're serving and when you're in community and when you're not isolated and closed up in, self, in yourself, come on, it is very, 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 very healthy. We're talking about the habits of a healed woman, right? And see, and it brings a different kind of of joy to your life. Thank you for putting that up there. Number one was soul care. Number one was soul care. And that was your daily time with God and the how your creative your creativity flows with that. So that was number one. And I'll do a recap. So an unhealed woman or an unaware woman tends to be stuck in procrastination. She will be sort of um, a little bit isolated, more worried about what people are thinking has a lot of fear and unresolved stuff and just fearful to show up. There's that residue of shame. We have a lot of relics and residue of our past and that old shame and that old embarrassment that really hinders the flow of purpose. Not realizing that the moment you begin to, to give of yourself, that's a joy. The moment you connect and open up in community, and that's a big deal. I haven't always been the most open person. Like God puts me in these little seasons and I'm in these moments where I have to pull back and I really have to sit still before God. And it's like discerning, okay, is this, am I isolating myself because I want to be funny and flaky or, or is this really just time for me to pull back? Right. And so we got to kind of navigate that and know what's going on with us. Yes. Afraid to speak up and afraid to trust. Come on, because we've been burnt in the past. But then we got to get to the point like, do I really trust that if I get burnt again, I get in relationships, I get in community and I get my feelings hurt again. Do I trust that God can heal me anyway? If it, as long as we're human, we're going to bump heads. As long as we're human, somebody's going to make us aggravated. As long as I'm a human being living on this planet, in, planet in this earth suit, in this body, somebody's going to get on my nerves, right? And I'm going to get on somebody else's nerves. And somebody's not going to like what I said. And is that going to stop me from being in community? Am I going to get bent out of shape? And just shut down from the world just because somebody rubbed me the wrong way? Am I willing to forfeit my purpose? Come on. Because of my own insecurities. Because of my own vein. Come on. It's our vein. What I find with unhealed women, our vain imaginations. My vain imagination. She think this and she don't like me and this and that. It's the vain imaginations that keep us bound. Hey, Chatney, I'm going to get your book, Chatney. My vain imaginations keep me in these little weird thoughts like she didn't like my post and this and that. And I talk about this. Y'all done got me going somewhere. Blessings to you all. But in my book, A Woman's Journey Home, I got a whole chapter. Let me look at this. Give me a minute and I'm going to wrap this up, you guys. Y'all done got me going somewhere. Chapter 14, the very last chapter of this book. The five deadly eyes that prevent true connection. That's page 71. And I'm just going to read the names of them. And then you can get the book and see it. Vain imaginations, boo. Vain imaginations. Let's just look at this real quick. Because these are we're talking about the habits of a healed woman. And this is a tendency of the unhealed woman that's keeping her in a place where she's not where she needs to be. I'm reading straight from my book, page 71. Women need healthy connections and relationships. 
From my own experience, I believe that there are five deadly eyes that keep sisters from the connection, collaboration, and community necessary for healing and healthy relationships. They are number one, broken identity, number two, deep insecurity, number three, feelings of inadequacy, number four, vain imaginations, come on, and number five, being easily intimidated. So it's the identity, the insecurity, feeling inadequate, vain imaginations, and being intimidated. I struggle with all five of them. I'll be the first one to tell you. I've had to fight through. I had to write a book about it. <laughs> I'm just sitting here looking at you guys. Vain imaginations, all of this stuff. These, these are the tendencies of someone that's still in process that's not healed, right? And it's a daily journey. You won't get it all together, but these are the things that keep us from showing up fully as the women of God that we're called to be. And, it, you know, we're out here hustling and we're not healing. We got to heal while we hustle or take a break and heal and then hustle. But sometimes you hustle while you heal, but don't be out here hustling and not even trying to heal because I'm dealing with all of these things. We're talking about the habits of a healthy woman. So by way of a recap, we said number one, soul care. And I only gave three. There's so many. And definitely I encourage you to get my book, A Woman's Journey Home, because I talk about the 14 keys to ascending to the next dimension. The link is in my Amazon bio. Number one, soul care. This is the first and foundational habit of a healed woman. Set aside time to take care of your soul between you and God. Get your, your journal, your Bible, do what you need to do, but get with God every day and make that your part of your soul care practice. Number two, self-awareness. Being aware of what's going on in your body, being aware of when you're feeling anxious, being aware of all of your emotions, sitting with them, not running from them, not using social media with getting scrolliosis and just getting away scrolling and doing all this extra and not sitting with yourself. Being aware. Being aware when you're around certain people, how are you feeling? Not overlooking red flags. Self-awareness. And number three, self-giving and community. Not being isolated, withdrawn, in fear, self-sabotaging, not serving, not showing up in purpose. There's a different level of joy and flow and creativity that you will have when you begin to do what God called you to do and open your heart up to love, open your heart up to connection, and open your heart up to community. So this is the habits of a healed woman. And I hope, hope this blessed you. Definitely click the link in my bio, go to Amazon and grab your copy of this book, A Woman's Journey Home, 14 Keys to Ascending to the Next Dimension. And just check out the links for um, the five unconscious blocks to love. These are the mistakes women make as they're healing uh, from a breakup. I want you to click that link and get your downloadable uh, worksheet and audio if you haven't done that. Oh, I'm so glad you guys are here. Good to see you, Chatney. And I had, I'm going to get your book. I had that on my mind and think, things to do because I wanted to support your book, Chatney. So blessings to you. Thank you for being here tomorrow. I'm so excited. Blessings to you all. Share this if you haven't done so as you're led to do so. And my goal is to be out here at least once a week every Monday. So take care and talk to you soon.